Hey. Hey, you. You like Battlestar Galactica? You might like this build then. So for the Awani Command Carrier, I've done something that I've been wanting to do for quite a while now. And I'm glad I waited until now to do it because uh, not only has the uh, the new advanced hangar bay consoles made this a lot easier, but uh, the console and the Type 7 shuttle pets that come with the Awani have made that even easier than just the advanced consoles. So what I've done with the Awani Command Carrier is try to make it into a sort of fighter support build. Meaning the focus of this build is designed to deal damage with the hangar pets, rather than dealing damage with the ship itself. The ship will still be dealing some of its own damage as well, but the theme here is the pets, so they're going to be the primary focus of the build. Now, it wasn't until I got most of the way through putting this thing together until I realized that I had kind of stumbled into making a Battlestar Galactica-themed build. Think of the Valkyrie Squadron in the first hangar bay as the Vipers, which are going to be dealing a great deal of damage for the build. The Type 7 shuttles are the Raptors, which are there for supporting the fighters and the mothership, as well as dealing some damage on their own. And then the Awani here will be taking the place of the Battlestar, which will be laying down a lot of fire at will for the sake of providing cover fire for the fighters, as well as, you know, doing other stuff to engage enemy starships. This build is actually going to take a few elements from that random TFO build that I used on the Legendary Akira a while back. In particular, a number of the support and healing elements that I used on that build. And I've already said that we're going to be using Fire at Will on this build, so obviously we're going to be starting with a number of Beam Arrays, because with a 3-3 build, we're going to be using this as a sort of broadside Fire at Will build. I used Phaser on this build, largely because I am using the Hydra's console, which does deal Phaser damage, and thus is buffed by Phaser console buffs. So just for that, I would recommend Phaser, but don't feel like you have to stick to that. I used Agony Phasers just because they're what I have on hand on this character, but really, Pulse Phasers probably would have been a better option. Their proc not only buffs your own damage resistance, but also lowers enemy damage resistance, so they would actually help your fighters do a bit more damage. And I also threw in the Terran Task Force Phaser Beam, just for the sheer power of this beam, and the Trilithium Omni for that chance to buff my haste. And then we've got a Wide Angle Torpedo here, because technically this is also a broadside build, so having a Wide Angle Torpedo will make that easier to fire off. The Wide Angle Quantum Torpedo is usually your best option for a Wide Angle Torpedo, but you could also go with the Prolonged Engagement Photon Torpedo if you prefer. In the core set, it's actually the same as what I used on the Legendary Akira build. A Protomatter Deflector from the Fleet Colony for buffs to Crit Chance and Crit Severity. Though honestly, thinking on it now, those buffs to Crit Chance and Crit Severity really aren't going to be that important because they're only going to be buffing your weapons, not your fighters, so really you could have gone with the Discovery Deflector to get the three-piece for that for Mycelia Lightning. Because I'm already using the Discovery Warp Core and Shield just for the sake of getting the two-piece for the extra hull regeneration. So yeah, that's an option to you. If you'd rather have the Crit Chance and Severity, go with this, or if you'd rather have Mycelia Lightning, go with the Discovery Deflector. Either way though, I would definitely recommend using the prevailing Innervated Impulse Engine from the Competitive Reputation because this is going to be a rather slow build. And that's going to be because my power settings are a little bit different than normal. I still have the weapon system maxed out for power, but I've got everything else dumped into Auxiliary. And that's because the higher your Auxiliary power is, the lower the cooldowns on your hangar bays will be. So because this is a very fighter-focused build, you want to keep those cooldowns as low as possible. So I'm sacrificing my engine power for that. Which is why you're very likely going to want the competitive engine, and whatever other speed buffs you can get your hands on. The devices are my usual allotment for an energy weapon build. So energy amplifier, reactive armor catalyst, deuterium surplus, Kobayashi Maru transponder. I went with subspace field modulator this time for the extra damage resistance, just make sure you don't use it on anything that deals proton damage. And the flagship distress frequency transponder. Now, there actually is one other device that actually would have been a really good idea to mix into this build just for the sake of fitting the theme. In the Romulan Mystery Story arc, there is an episode called The Vault, and this episode rewards a device called Scorpion Fighters. Activating this device will launch three Scorpion Fighters that will fight alongside you. They're very weak, they do next to no damage, but at the same time, it's three additional pets that you wouldn't normally have. And with this thing upgraded to T6X2, I'm not exactly hurting for device slots, having six of them. So really, I probably should have included this device on the build, but the reason I didn't go get it is because, one, I don't like the fact that it's a consumable device. You only get about 50 uses of it, and then it's just gone. You gotta replay the episode and get another one. And that's kind of the part I don't like, because the episode this is rewarded from is The Vault which is one of my least favorite episodes in the entire game, because you have to fly a shuttle through the entire thing, and I hate shuttles. So yeah, if you want to play through the vault again, by all means go for it and get that Scorpion device, but I'm not doing it. 
Okay, now the consoles are where we really get into the fighter support stuff. Now, despite being a normal science carrier, the Iwani has the unique distinction of having five engineering console slots, which is normally something you only see on cruisers. So you're going to be able to put a good amount of the hangercraft power transmission consoles onto the ship. This is one reason why I'm glad I waited so long to do this build, because I've been wanting to do this for a while, and originally I was wanting to do it on the Seneca, but the Seneca only has three engineering slots. So with the Awanis 5, I'm able to get two extra hangar bay consoles on here. Now, you've probably noticed in the consoles, I've got a pair of Protomatter Matrix infusers in here instead of more of the hangar bay consoles. In my testing, I found the extra healing to be really helpful for maintaining survivability. So I really wanted to have a total of three on here, but if you're less concerned with survival and you want to just go full hog with the pets, then you could easily swap these two out for more hangar bay consoles. Now, these hangar bay consoles are advanced engineering consoles, which means they are a lot like the isomagnetic consoles. By which I mean the only way to get them is by grinding elite TFOs and then crafting the consoles yourself or buying them on the exchange. Fortunately, since the introduction of random elite level TFOs, grinding out the advanced consoles is much easier than it used to be. Because by completing a random elite level TFO, you get your choice of any component for one of these consoles. Now, for the rest of the Universal consoles, again, these are all here purely for the sake of benefiting the fighters. First is Swarmer Matrix, which is from the Infinity Lockboxes, but it's not attached to any ship, so you can just get it on its own from the exchange. Its clickability doesn't deal much damage, it just sends out a bunch of Swarmer Jones to collide with enemy ships dealing some physical damage. It's not a lot, but it's more here for the passives. Giving plus 30% turn speed, flight speed, and damage to your hangar pets and targetable torpedoes. Then we've got the console from the Hydra, which weirdly enough gives the same passive as Swarmer Matrix. So that's another plus 30% to turn speed, flight speed, and damage for your hangar pets. But this one's more here for the click ability, which teleports a bunch of your pets right next to you, and they unleash a bunch of phaser damage to a bunch of random targets around you. This is why I stuck with phaser for the weapons, because this also deals phaser damage, so those are going to synergize really well because they're both going to be buffed by phaser. High energy communication network off of the support carriers. This one is more for adding survivability to the actual fighters. Activating it will give plus 100 to accuracy rating, defense rating, and plus 20% to shield resistance. And any foes caught within its radius will get a damage resistance debuff, which is nice. Additionally, activating this console will also give a plus 1 rank up to all active hangar pets. This is really nice because you want to get your hangar pets to rank up as quickly as possible, because the higher they're ranked, the more damage and the more survivability that they will have. Sensor Suspension Burst off the Jerok Alliance Carrier. Passives on this one are kind of nice because it's giving myself a pretty decent crit chance buff, and it's also increasing my aux power, which is part of the reason why I have so much extra auxiliary power despite having it only set to 70. Remember, aux power is mostly being used here for the sake of lowering the cooldowns of the hangar pets. But this console is also good for that too, because activating it will actually reset the recharge on the hangar base, so you're going to be able to get your fighters that much quicker when you activate this. Additionally, activating it will also give a 30% buff to the crit chance to your hangar pets for 20 seconds. And then we've got the new console, Fleet Power Network Array, which comes off of the Awani itself. Of all the other Universal consoles here, this one is probably going to be most valuable for the sake of the build. Because activating this console gives massive amounts of firing cycle haste to both you and your hangar pets. Ranging between plus 50% to plus 125% firing cycle haste, which scales with your auxiliary power. Which, again, another reason why we've got our auxiliary power so high. Additionally, while the console is active, it has a 60% chance of applying a firing mode. Beam Overload 1, Cannon Rapid Fire 1, or Torpedo Volley. Now, during my first impression review, I was very skeptical about this portion of the console. Con I was concerned that it could potentially override your bridge officer versions of your firing modes. Fortunately, it doesn't do that. If you activate this and one of the firing modes triggers, and then you activate your bridge officer firing mode, the bridge officer mode will take the priority. So you don't have to worry about that Beam Overload 1 overriding your Fire at Will 3 or your Beam Overload 3, because the game will prioritize the one that your Bridge Officer is using. In fact, it's actually proven to be rather beneficial, because while we use certain traits to keep certain firing modes active 100% of the time, it's not always 100% foolproof. Sometimes your timing is off, or sometimes the server lags and your ability just completely misfires. But when something like that happens, the extra firing mode from this console actually proves to be rather beneficial, because that way you actually have some sort of firing mode going out while you're waiting for your bridge officer ability to come off of cooldown. So while a lot of us thought this was already going to be a very impressive console due to those firing cycle haste buffs, 
it's already surpassed my expectations because of the way that they dealt with these extra firing mode abilities. That said, there is still one problem with this thing, and that's, uh, well, there's an unintended side effect to this thing while it's active, and that is it's causing some other cooldowns on other consoles to shorten when they actually shouldn't be. Like you can see here when I activate these other consoles and then I activate this console, their cooldowns will all drastically lower to less than a minute. So yeah, that part of the console is super broken and overpowered and I'm sure not intended. So I wouldn't grow accustomed to having those lower cooldowns because I'm sure that's going to get patched out eventually. Hopefully sooner rather than later because we really don't want to deal with another agony redistributor situation. But trust me, once this console is fixed, it'll still be absolutely amazing just because of all that haste. And not just for carrier builds, but any energy weapon build, because that haste applies to both you and your pets, not just them. It's also very valuable as a support console, because you can also apply its buff to other players instead of yourself. And then finally in the hangar bays, we've got the Elite Type 7 Shuttlecraft. These are the new pets that come with the Iwani. Or at least the standard versions are, these are the Elite versions, which you can unlock at a Fleet Star base. Now, on their own, the Type 7s actually aren't great damage dealers, which is why I'm only using one hangar bay of them. Their real power is their ability to debuff enemy damage resistance using Attack Pattern Beta and Close In Sensor Pass. That means these pets would actually be really good with something more weapons based, like a Dreadnought or a Strike Wing Escort or even a Flight Deck Carrier. While they themselves wouldn't deal a lot of damage, they would deal a lot of debuff, which would prove very beneficial to improving the overall damage of the main build. But all of those reasons is why I'm actually only using one hangar bay of the Type 7s. I need some sort of damage dealer pet that would benefit more greatly from all the damage buffs I'm giving from all these consoles. Which is why I'm using the Valkyries in the other hangar bay. The Type 7s debuff everything, while the Valkyries beat the crap out of it with pulse cannons and torpedoes. Now before we move on to the rest of the build, I want to share a special announcement. Sorry for the interruption, but there is one thing I want to talk about that I think you guys will be excited to hear about because the channel hit the next subscriber goal, so we are officially at 6969 subscribers! Or at least we were for a hot minute. I think, I think it's a little bit above that at this point, but still, we hit the goal! To celebrate, I am giving away codes for the legendary First Strike bundle over on the Continuum Discord. I've got three codes for each platform, so three for PC, three for PlayStation, and three for Xbox. All you have to do is go to the Continuum Discord, which will be linked in the description below. I'll put it in a pinned comment too to make it easy to find, but all you gotta do is join that Discord server, find the giveaways channel, and you will see all three giveaways listed uh, in that channel. Then you just have to hit the little party horn button and you will be entered the win. The raffle will be live for one week and then the Discord bot will pick three random winners for each giveaway. But yeah, just thank you so much to all of you for sticking around all this time you know for hanging out for watching the videos and helping the channel to continue to grow and allow me to do silly crap like this also thank you so much to ambassador kale for hooking me up with the codes and uh yeah so yeah go to the discord enter the giveaway hopefully win a prize yay and anyway uh let's uh let's get back to the video for the skill specializations i've stuck with my usual intel officer for primary and temporal officer for secondary and that's really just because none of the specializations have anything to offer for a pet build, unfortunately. As usual, if you prefer Strategist as your secondary for space, that's fine, you could easily go with that. I usually go with Temporal as my secondary, just because Strategist has no ground skill buffs. Though, alternatively, I guess I could have gone with Temporal as the primary, just because that way I would get access to continuity, which is always good for survival. Up to you, really, just for the sake of this build, it's really not going to make much of a difference either way. It's just going to depend on which area you want to focus in more. Survival or damage output. In the personal space traits, we're going to do this like we usually do because there are a lot of personal traits in here that I use on most builds. So I'm not going to go over every single personal trait, but I will go over the four unique ones that I'm using for this build. The rest of them will be listed on the screen. The first is Feel the Weight of Our Presence, which gives a scaling damage resistance debuff to enemies based on the number of allies that you have within 12 kilometers of you. I said nearby allies, I should have said allied NPCs, because this does not apply to other players, but this will apply to pets that you summon. So that includes hangar pets, which is the main strength of this build, plus distress beacons, turrets, and other forms of NPC allies. Next is independent wingmate, which you guys have probably seen me use on other past pet builds. This will give a plus 200% bonus damage buff and a plus 200 damage resistance rating to the first pet that you launch. It'll only apply to one pet at a time, and if the pet that has Independent Wingmate dies, then the next one you launch will receive that buff instead. With this build, because most of our damage is going to be coming from the Valkyrie Hanger pets, you want to make sure that they're the ones that launch first, so that one of them ends up getting the Independent Wingmate buff. 
it's not going to be as useful on one of the Type 7s because they deal less damage. Next up is Wing Commander, which gives a plus 100% rank up to XP for all hangar pets, meaning that they will level up more quickly. Remember what I said earlier, the faster your pets rank up, the more powerful they'll become, both offensively and defensively. And the last one is called Holographic Mirage Decoys. This will make it so when your pets are attacked for the first time, they will be immune to damage for two seconds after that first attack. It's a way to get some extra survivability on your pets. It's not going to do all that much because that immunity only applies for two seconds, and it only applies the one time per pet. So it's not the most useful of the personal traits, but it can be helpful for keeping your pets alive a bit longer. That said, I would say this is also the most expendable of the personal traits, so if you want to swap in something better, then feel free to do so. Moving on to the Starship traits, first we are using Entwined Tactical Matrices off of the Gagarin Miracle Worker Battlecruiser. This build is going to be using fire at will, more so for the sake of applying suppression barrage to enemies in order to debuff their damage rather than applying actual damage output for myself. But either way, with fire at will, obviously you're going to want to have ETM here as well. And then a couple traits to buff my firing cycle haste, emergency weapon cycle off of the Arbiter, and calm before the storm off the Cardassian Intel flight deck carrier. And then the rest of these traits are more here for the carrier specific stuff. First is strike group command authority off of the Hydra Intel destroyer. This will give bonus damage buffs to pets based on the size of those pets. So because we're not going to have anything larger than a fighter, we're only going to be getting that 30% bonus damage buff, but, you know, 30% is still a nice bonus damage buff. Though if you really wanted to get that higher, you could swap out one of the consoles for Linked Command Matrix off of the Jem'Hadar Vanguard Carrier. The pet that that summons in counts as one of the multi-vector or saucer separation consoles, so you'll be able to get the full 50% from that console. The console off the Crossfield Refit would work too. Next is Target That Explosion off of the Earhart Strikewing Escort and the Legendary Excelsior. Whenever I activate a Torpedo or Command Bridge Officer ability, on my next Torpedo attack, up to six nearby allies will also launch their own Torpedo. That will include nearby players or nearby NPC pets. And the NPCs don't even technically have to have a Torpedo themselves, because it generates its own Torpedo, which is why sometimes you'll see one of the Type 7s firing a Photon Torpedo, despite the fact that them not having a Torpedo. It's because of this trait. Because the advanced hangar bay consoles give buffs to torpedo damage for pets, I was hoping that would also buff this starship trait because this is also giving torpedoes to pets, but apparently it doesn't seem to work like that. This still didn't deal as much damage as I was hoping it would. So if you wanted to, you could replace the starship trait with something else. I just kept it here just because it does feel thematically appropriate, but its actual damage output wasn't really that impressive. Actually, if you have a suggestion for another pet trait that would be better, let me know in the comments. Actually, Hive Bearer off the Herc multi-mission science vessel probably would have been a nice substitute, because that summons in additional Herc swarmers every time you launch a pet. But I don't own that ship, so I don't have that starship trait. Plus, summoning in Herc pets feels a little theme-breaking, so I don't know if I'd want to use that anyway. Next is Scramble Fighters, which this one actually isn't attached to a starship. This one has a chance to drop out of the Delta Alliance duty officer packs. Though I got a copy of this trait because a random Cation just kind of came along and chucked it at my head. And when I say chucked it at my head, I mean he nicely gifted it to me. Thank you again. What this does is every time you launch a pet, your other pets will gain certain buffs. Specifically, they will be immune to all damage and gain a 25% all damage buff for 5 seconds, and it'll restore 50% of their maximum hull. So the damage immunity from this trait, coupled with the damage immunity from holographic mirage decoys, now we've got two hits of damage immunity to our pets instead of just one. Plus the starship trait has a built-in heal for your pets, which is even nicer. I do, however, wish the damage buff was a bit better on this trait. For a damage buff, 5 seconds really isn't a long time, and that 25% is only cat 1, so it's not going to be a huge buff for your pets. So I wish they either would have extended the duration of the damage buff, or just made it bonus damage and keep it at 5 seconds. But what can you do? At the very least, it is still nice for keeping your pets alive. And the last trait is Superior Air Denial, which, again, this is another one I'm sure you guys have seen plenty of times before on the channel. Anytime I activate Fire at Will or Scatter Volley, it will give my pets both Fire at Will and Scatter Volley at the same time. Additionally, it'll also allow my weapons to apply a brief damage resistance debuff to any enemies that I hit. Now, strictly speaking for the Type 7 shuttles, Superior Air Denial actually isn't that useful for them because they already have Fire at Will 1, at least the Elite versions do. So if you are running with two hangar bays of Type 7s, then you probably don't need to worry about Superior Air Denial, unless you really want that extra damage resistance debuff for your own weapons. But in this case, we are keeping Superior Air Denial for that debuff, and also for the sake of buffing the Valkyrie pets. Because with this trait, we're able to give them Cannon Scatter Volley every time I activate Fire at Will. Moving on to the Bridge Officer seating, you can probably already notice that it's pretty atypical for what I usually do on Bridge Officers. 
largely because of how low level the tactical seating abilities are. Normally I would say only running fire at will 1 is crazy, but for the sake of this build it really just kind of works because most of our damage is coming from the pets, not from our actual weapons. So in the case of this build, Fire at Will's main job is more about dealing debuffs to enemy targets rather than applying actual damage. And going with Fire at Will 1 left me room to apply Attack Pattern Beta into the second seat, so that's another debuff. And then we've got Torp Spread up here in this Universal seat because obviously we need Torp Spread for ETM to work. In the Engineering seat we also got a little weird by using Deploy Construction Shuttle Wing in the Ensign seat. This is a fairly decent heal over time ability, but the main reason I used this is because it, the shuttles that it summons in are actual pets, and they will actually work with the Hydra console, which I thought was kind of neat. Obviously you could swap this out for something that you think is more useful, but the fact that it summons in actual pets that heals you, thematic wise, it was just too irresistible. And then we've got emergency power to weapons to buff our weapons and trigger emergency weapon cycle. And this last one I debated on for a while. This is Narrow Sensor Bands 3, which is also used to buff my energy weapons. Miracle Worker doesn't really have anything that really benefits the pets, unfortunately. There is Aligned Shield Frequencies, which is technically capable of regenerating allied shields as well as your own. So you could use that as a heal for the pets, but frankly I don't find it to be that useful. Alternatively, you could just not worry about the Miracle Worker seating altogether, move Emergency Power to Weapons up to 3, and throw Emit Unstable Warp Bubble into the Lieutenant seat for another Unconventional Systems trigger. But I stuck with Narrow Sensor Bands 3 just because I wanted my ship's weapons to feel like they were still doing something. Something beyond just applying debuffs. Yes, this is primarily a pet-focused build, but at the same time you are in command of a starship, and a starship should be able to put out some decent damage output on its own as well. The Commander Science slash Command Seat is largely being used for Command Seats, which is why the Lieutenant Commander Universal is also being used for Science. For the Command Seating, I'm using Rally Point to heal myself, the fighters, and really any other ally that is caught within its AoE, Concentrate Firepower to give myself and my pets some extra torpedo damage, and Suppression Barrage 3 to debuff enemy damage output. That way I can help keep myself and my pets alive longer. And in that ensign seat is Tractor Beam, and that's largely there for an unconventional systems trigger. And that's why this Lieutenant Commander Universal seat is also being used as a science seat. So we've got jam targeting sensors, scramble sensors, and gravity well, all for unconventional systems triggers. And gravity well is also really useful as a control ability in order to group enemies together. In the duty officer seating, I'm just now realizing that there is one change I definitely could have made. I left one of these projectile officers that buffed my crit chance on here, and really I probably should have swapped in Vincent Kish instead. That would give me a chance to turn my Fire at Will 1 into a Fire at Will 2. Vincent Kish is much less expensive than these crit chance guys, so yeah, I would probably recommend doing that over this. Additionally, I've also got a flight deck officer in here that reduces the recharge time of my hangar bays. I've only got one on here because I found out I actually only have one, so I really need to grind up more of these. You can have up to three of these on a build. There are several different versions that do different things. I like the recharge times ones best. There is also a version that increases pet damage, but the pets have to be in escort mode, not in attack mode, which is why I tend not to use them as much. I usually prefer my pets in attack mode, but really it's going to depend on you and which direction you want to focus on. Now, let's get a look at the demonstration as well as some combat logs. The first log that you're seeing was recorded in the Jupiter Gauntlet run that is playing in the background right now. the Continuum Discord, which this, will be linked in the description below. I'll put it in a pinned comment too to make it easy to find a grain of salt. All you gotta do is because join that Discord server, earlier, find the giveaways channel, and you'll see all three giveaways listed in that channel. And you'll see all three giveaways listed in that channel. All my consoles are getting lower cooldowns than they should be, and therefore that is going to be improving the overall damage that I'm doing with them. But if you take that away, this build should still easily do over 200k. Possibly even close to 250. In the player analysis, one thing you can see at the top is the target debuff that I managed to get out of this build, which was at 140%, which is an impressive amount of debuff for one ship, but you know, that's because we're using the Type 7 shuttles, all of which have Attack Pattern Beta 3 on them, plus the additional debuffs that I've got running on the ship itself. As expected, most of the damage did come from the pets, being about 80k. The Valkyries did nearly 42k of that pet damage, whereas the Type 7s did nearly 29k which actually isn't as big of a split as I expected. I thought the Valkyries would far exceed the, the damage output of the Type 7s, which means that the Type 7s are still doing a decent job of standing up on their own. Fire Wheel 1 also did a decent job on its own, doing 61k, and that's not including the Terran Task Force Beam Array and the Trilithium, which did 27 and 17k, respectively. Target that explosion only did 4k, yeah, that's pretty disappointment. Like, I got more damage out of Entropic Rider than that. I'm going to show you guys one more combat log as well because I managed to get this thing through a random ISE in which I managed to do 483k. 
Now, again, that should be taken with a grain of salt due to the broken nature of the Awani's console. It's lowering cooldowns too quickly for your other universal consoles. So, again, I'm getting stuff much sooner than I should be. But it is still quite impressive, and I think once they do manage to fix that console, this thing should still be doing around 400k. Assuming that you're under the same conditions as well, because it's a random ISC. There's no guarantee on what the other players are going to be bringing in. But looking at this combat log, the pets ended up doing way better, but that's kind of to be expected. Infected has a much different setup than Jupiter Gauntlet, so there's a lot less downtime between between uh, waves. It's much quicker, things are a lot less clustered together, but yeah, it is still impressive to see. There wasn't much different in the Type 7's damage, only going up to 31k, but the Valkyries did 87k in this run. Again, likely just the virtue of everything being more closely clustered together to take better advantage of all the Torp spreads and these cannon scatter volley that the Valkyries will get. So yeah, that is my fighter support build, or what I should be calling my Battlestar Galactica theme build on the Awani Command Carrier. I was really happy with how this build turned out just because this is a playstyle I really wanted to see develop in Star Trek Online for a long time, but it's only been until recently that it's actually viable in most forms of the game. Granted, it's still not perfect, because, I mean, as good as this build was, I mean, it still would have been much better on a normal flight deck carrier, because then you would have had the full armaments of a normal cruiser rather than the 3-3 layout of, uh, of a normal science carrier. I'm still hoping science carriers get some sort of pet-related buff to be able to set them apart, not just from science ships, but also from flight deck carriers, because... They need something to give them their own identity, because with the existence of flight deck carriers and normal carriers... You know, what's the point of a normal carrier when flight deck carriers exist, but they keep insisting on putting out normal carriers. So normal carriers need something, something else, you know, and that's why I think some sort of innate damage buff to pets would be the best option to go. Because otherwise people are just going to keep shouting, give, uh, give science carriers a secondary deflector. And no, that's not the answer, because then that just turns them all into science ships. Anyway, let me know what you thought of the build down below, and while you're down there, be sure to like and subscribe and hit that bell for notifications. If you'd like to further support the channel, you can hit that join button to become a member, or if you're ever shopping on the Epic Game Store, be sure to use my content creator code STU1701. It doesn't cost you anything extra, but it does help me out, and I do appreciate that. That is content creator code STU1701. I also have a discount code on real merch if you're ever shopping for any, uh, any Star Trek models from the Eagle Moss collection. I have an affiliate link with Real Merch, which is down in the video's description, or if you're ever just checking out from there, you can use the discount code from there, which is Stu1701. Again, it helps me out, and I do appreciate it. But either way, though, thank you so much for watching. My name's Stu, and I will see you guys next time.